Okay, so for this section, we're going to look at graphing rational functions, identifying vertical asymptotes. So what we have here are three examples of rational functions. So they're rational functions because they have a numerator and a denominator. So when we're looking for vertical asymptotes, we first want to make sure that the uh, fraction doesn't simplify at all. And in each three of the three cases we have here, they can't be um, simplified. So then once they're simplified, uh, we only look at the denominator. So for each one, if we look at the denominator, that's going to tell us where the vertical asymptotes are going to be, if there are any. So for the first function, the denominator is just an x. And we're looking for when the denominator is equal to 0. So we don't really have to do much work here, but we identify that the vertical asymptote for the first function is that x is equal to 0. And we always want to write it as an equation. And the equation here is actually the equation for a vertical line. So x is equal to 0 would be a vertical line at x is equal to 0 on the xy plane. So if we look at the second example, we have 1 over x minus 1. So again, we look at the denominator. x minus 1, we want to see when is that equal to 0. So we'd have to do a little bit of solving here. But if we're just trying to figure out when it's equal to 0, we could just add 1 to both sides. And we come up with x is equal to 1. So for the second one, we have a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 1. And we'll talk later about how this is going to help us in terms of graphing. So then we look at the third one. Again, all we need to look at is the denominator. So when we're finding vertical asymptotes, um, as long as we know it's simplified, then we can completely neglect the numerator. So I'm just trying to figure out when x squared plus 4x plus 3 is equal to 0. So we have to do a little bit more here because we can't just uh, get the x completely by itself because we're dealing with a quadratic. So you could actually use the quadratic formula here to solve, or you could just go ahead and use factoring. So for factoring, this actually factors into x plus 3 and x plus 1. And if we want that to equal 0, it just allows us to have two smaller uh, equations to solve. So we end up with one equation is x plus 3 is equal to 0, and the other one is x plus 1 is equal to 0. So if I solve the first one, I can just subtract 3 from both sides, ending up with x is equal to negative 3. The second equation, I can subtract 1 from both sides, so I end up with x is equal to negative 1. So we get two vertical asymptotes. We get 1 at x is equal to negative 3, and then another vertical asymptote at x is equal to negative 1. The second thing we're looking at is going to be horizontal asymptotes. So horizontal asymptotes actually indicate end behavior. What is the graph doing on the far left, and what is it doing on the far right? So that's what's meant by x to infinity and x to negative infinity. For horizontal asymptotes, we have to look at both the numerator and the denominator, and what we're doing is we're actually comparing degrees. So the first example, it says that if the degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the denominator, then there is no horizontal asymptote. So if we look at the degree for each one, we just have to look here. This is the term with the highest exponent, so the degree is equal to 3. And then we look at the denominator. This is the term that has the largest exponent. So in the degree here is equal to just 1. So this is an example where the degree in the numerator is larger than the degree in the denominator, because 3 is larger than 1. So we would say no horizontal asymptote. And I'm just going to abbreviate horizontal asymptote as H A. So then if we move to the second example, if the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, so I'll start by looking at our example here. So if we look at this term, we get that the degree of the numerator is 2, and the degree of the denominator is also 2. And then um, 
to finish off what it says in 2, and p is the leading coefficient of the numerator and q is the leading coefficient of the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote occurs at y is equal to p over q. So if we're looking for leading coefficients in either case, for the numerator, the leading coefficient is equal to 5, and for the denominator, the leading coefficient is equal to 4. So here we're referring to 5 as being the p-value and 4 as being the q-value. So our horizontal asymptote is going to be at y is equal to 5 over 4. And then if we move to the third example, which is the last possible option. Um, so if the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote occurs at y is equal to 0. So for this example, the degree of the numerator is 1. The degree of the denominator is 2. So in this case, the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator because 1 is smaller than 2. Then our horizontal asymptote is always going to be at y is equal to 0. So now what we want to look at is how um, the vertical asymptotes and the horizontal asymptotes uh, work with the actual graph of the rational function. So let's start by looking at the top left one. And we're going to start for each one and identify all the vertical asymptotes and then move on to horizontal asymptotes. So to start it off, um, if we just look at the graph of this first one, what we should be able to see is that there's actually a vertical asymptote right here. So vertical asymptotes would be a vertical line somewhere on the graph um, where you can tell that there's a jump at that point in the domain. And usually what happens is on the left and the right you have the graph sort of going quickly in the upward or downward direction. So this one we say has a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 0. So if we went in the reverse direction and we identified that there was a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 0, I draw that um, vertical asymptote as a dotted line because it's not technically part of the graph. It's just going to help um, give boundaries when I go to graph it. And then I know on either side it's going to have to go sort of straight up or straight down in either direction. So moving to the second one. So here it sort of appears that there's a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 5. I'm going to try to draw another dotted line right there to show us. So x is equal to 5 is the vertical asymptote. One thing I want us to know about the third one on the top is that there's two vertical asymptotes. So there appears to be one at x is equal to negative 2. Just trying to draw my vertical line here as best I can. So x is equal to negative 2. And then there appears to be another one at 3. So x is equal to 3. So if I had identified those two vertical asymptotes, I would have graphed the two dotted lines. And then I know I have to fill in sort of the shapes in between. And then the same thing if we go and move to the bottom. There's two vertical asymptotes again. So there's a vertical asymptote at negative 2, it appears. So x is equal to negative 2. And then there's one at x is equal to, oops, x is equal to 3. So right here. So what you might notice is that the vertical asymptotes are the same as that last one that we looked at, um, but the graphs are not completely identical, even though they do have those same two vertical asymptotes. So moving 
to the next one. So here it looks like we've got a vertical asymptote at 3. Kind of like the graph jumps from one place to another right at x is equal to 3. And the last one, if we look at this, the vertical asymptote appears to be at x is equal to negative 3. So now that we've identified the vertical asymptote for each graph, we're going to go back and look and see if we can find the horizontal asymptote for each graph. So for horizontal asymptotes, remember we're seeing what happens as the graph moves to the left and to the right. So if we look at that first, so the top left example, as the graph moves towards the left, it does appear that the y values get pretty close to 3. And the same thing as we move towards the right, it appears that those values, they're moving, they're decreasing, they're going down, but they still seem to be going towards a value of 3. So this graph actually has a horizontal asymptote right here at 3. So I'm just going to draw in my horizontal line. And it's going to be at y is equal to, to 3. So if we move to the next graph, so same thing, we kind of see on the left and the right, even though one's, um, as we move left, let's say it's going up, and as we move right, we would say that the graph is moving down, but in either case, they seem to be going towards a similar number, and in this case, it looks like they're going towards 5. So I'm going to try to draw my vertical line right here. So this has a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 5. And the third example on the top, it looks like they're both going towards y is equal to negative 5. So this has a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to negative 5. So one thing to keep in mind is that horizontal asymptotes um, are just indicating end behavior. So for the last graph we did, the left and the right, the y values are going towards negative 5 but it doesn't necessarily indicate what's happening in the middle of the graph. So one thing you might notice here is that it does appear uh, right here at y is equal to negative 5. You actually have the graph crossing the y-axis, or I'm sorry, the horizontal asymptote. Um, y is equal to negative 5, which is okay. If you have a horizontal asymptote, your graph can cross somewhere in the middle, but if you have a vertical asymptote, your graph will never cross. Um, the vertical asymptote. So moving down to the next one, bottom left, we've got a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0. The next graph, it looks like we have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to negative 1. And then finally, the last graph, if we look at this, it appears as though uh, the horizontal asymptote would be about y is equal to 0.